District of Davao del Norte, the Honorable Pantaleon D. Alvarez, as the duly elected Speaker of the House of Representatives in the 17th Congress. Madam Presiding Officer, I now move Madam, Madam that Presiding a committee Officer. of 14 members composed of Representatives Eric Singson, Mercedes Alvarez, Fredenil Castro, Raneyu Abu, Lucy Gomez, Nancy Katamko, Eileen Ermita Buhain, Rosemary Arenas, Mylene Garcia Albano, Gwendolyn Garcia, Marlene Primicias Agabas, Emeline Aglipay Villar, Sarah Jane Elago, and Victoria Isabel Noel be constituted to notify Representative Pantaleon de Alvarez of his election as the Speaker of the House of Representatives and thereafter to escort the Speaker-elect to the restroom for the oath-taking rights. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The Notification Committee is hereby constituted. The members of the House so named are hereby appointed to the Notification Committee and they are requested to inform the Speaker-elect, the Honorable Pantaleon D. Alvarez, of his election and to escort him to the rostrum. The Chair invites the family of the Speaker-elect to join him at the rostrum as he takes his oath of office. The session is suspended. We would like to announce the uh, arrival of uh, the new Speaker of the House, the 17th Congress, Speaker Pantaleon de Alvarez. Okay. The Honorable Dennis C. Laugan of Party List Ang Kabuhayan will administer the oath of office to the Speaker-elect. The Honorable Dennis C. Laugan is requested to come to the rostrum and administer the oath of office to the Speaker. May we request all the members of the House to rise.
Ay. Ay, Pantaleon D. Alvarez of of having been elected as a representative of 1st District of Davao del Norte, having been elected as Speaker of the House of Representatives, hereby solemnly swear, hereby solemnly swear, that I will well and faithfully, that I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability, discharge to the best of my ability, the duties of my present position, the duties of my present position, and of all others, and of all others, I may hereafter hold. I may hereafter hold under the Republic of the Philippines. Under the Republic of the Philippines. That I will support. That I will support and defend the Constitution. And defend the Constitution of the Philippines. Of the Philippines. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the laws. And that I will obey the laws, legal orders, legal orders, and decrees, and decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities, promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines, of the Republic of Philippines. And that I, and that I impose this obligation, impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily upon myself voluntarily without mental reservation without mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion so help me god so help me god speaker Uh, you may sit down. <laughs> Colleagues, guests, ladies and gentlemen, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte was elected into office on the basis of a simple promise to the Filipino people. Genuine change. Those were refreshing words for a people tired and weary of rising criminality, proliferation of illegal drugs, traffic congestion, corruption, and plain incompetence. Those were the words that blew on the mainsail of his campaign and brought him to a new horizon, the horizon of national transformation. But the President knows, as we all know, that genuine change is impossible if he acts alone. No one, man or woman, not even a superman 
can forge genuine change without the cooperation of the other branches of government and the cooperation of the people themselves. True and genuine change can only come if we as a people and as a nation join hands with the President in achieving it. That is why we in the legislative branch of government have our work cut out for us. We must give the President the necessary legislation which will be his tools to effect meaningful and genuine change. In sum, we too must be instruments of change. We must reimpose the death penalty for heinous crimes. Among ASEAN nations, only Cambodia and the Philippines have no capital punishment. All the other eight countries impose death penalty in various forms and for various crimes. As the President has said, it is a simple universal law of karma. If you borrow from me a thousand pesos, then you must pay back the same amount plus interest. If you take a human life, especially if you do it deliberately and with premeditation, you must pay with your life. If by being a drug lord, you destroy the lives and futures of a thousand people, then you must pay accordingly. The same philosophy is behind the move to revert the minimum age of criminal responsibility from 15 years to 9 years old. This is not, as critics say, a throwback to a barbarian age. The age of exemption from criminal responsibility in Singapore is seven, the same age as in most states in the USA. The Pangilinan law was admittedly motivated by noble intentions, but it has been a failure on the ground. We must teach our young that there are consequences for everything we say and do. Cuddling teenagers by making them immune from crimes they commit will only breed a culture of impunity. We should instead build a culture of responsibility at an early age. As all commuters know, and that includes all of us here, the traffic in Metro Manila and Metro Cebu is simply terrible. We waste so many hours sitting in cars or buses or riding in jump-packed and rickety MRT and PNR trains instead of spending time at work or being with our families at home. 2.4 billion pesos a day is lost to traffic alone. The situation is, in most certain terms, a true crisis which needs emergency powers to enable the President to act. In this vein, we should revisit and revise the Government Procurement Act. Since its passage into law, many government agencies as well as those in the private sector have felt discomfited with RA 9184 as amended. Unlike a free size shirt, the procurement law should not be a one-size-fits-all kind of law. 
we should put in enough flexibility to address all foreseeable possibilities that may arise in the course of gover government procurement. The President has started the ball rolling in the direction of greater transparency in government with an executive order on freedom of information. We should do our part and enact a meaningful freedom of information law applicable to all branches of government. The greatest crimes are committed in dark secrecy. A freedom of information law will bring the light of truth and transparency into government transactions. The law on income taxation should be simplified into one imposed on gross income progressively. Tax laws have become so complicated that they are exploited by corrupt BIR officials in order to extort money from the taxpayers. Ordinary individuals, for their part, choose not to pay taxes precisely because they do not understand tax laws. A simplified law on taxation would encourage people to pay taxes and contribute to a society that they know will take care of them. As for mining, we would like to see mining companies securing a legislative franchise before they are allowed to operate. That way, their activities would be subject to legislative oversight and their franchises can be revoked by the oversight body instead of a probably bribable bureaucrat in an obscure DENR office if they violate the terms and conditions thereof. Also, we would like to ensure that these companies do not export the ores they mine. Processing or semi-processing of these ores should be done within the Philippines. This one way of to give jobs to our people instead of enriching only the stockholders of mining companies. The labor laws need revision. We should increase the penalties presently in our statutes for the non-payment of minimum wage and the National Wages and Productivity, Productivity Commission, the DOLE, should have an arm that will make sure violators are prosecuted. The practice of ENDO should be looked into. Manpower supply agencies should be mandated upon pain of criminal liability to comply with all labor standards on wages and benefits, and the employer be made solidarily liable. As for social security, it is only right and just that the pensions of our retirees should be adjusted upwards so they can buy their groceries and their medicines at today's prices. If we need to increase contributions so we can fund the increase in pension benefits, then we must. We must adjust not only to meet the present needs, but also to anticipate future needs. During elections, our senior citizens and PWDs, or differently abled citizens, should have the option to avail of the procedures for absentee voting. The fact that you are elderly or in a wheelchair should not disenfranchise you from participating in the most sacred exercise 
of a democratic nation, electing your leaders into office. Instead, and of course, the most holy grail of all, the revision of the 1987 Constitution and the transformation of our system of government from a unitary presidential form to a federal parliamentary one. The unitary and highly centralized form of government was imposed on us by the colonizing power of Spain and the United States of America. And for one reason, total control over the country. The results have been stunted growth in about 80% of our country. And the over-dependence of local government units upon the national government. The power of Imperial Manila over the rest of our nation has to end. Our LGUs need to be allowed to stand on their own feet and to develop and grow as they see fit, subject only to standards that the national government may set. This, among others, should be done by a constitutional convention within a time limit set by Congress. If this legislative agenda seem overly ambitious to some, it is only because of inertia. A body at rest tends to rest indefinitely and will resist movement. But we should not be like the admiral who, because he feared the big waves of the Pacific and the journey into the unknown, dropped anchor in a harbor and held office there. Let us not fear change. The only thing we should fear is the fear of change itself. Instead, let us embrace change. Let us be instruments of change and apply the other side of the law of inertia. A body on the move tends to move indefinitely. Starting today, then let us roll up our sleeves and get to work. Our mission in this 17th Congress is clear, to enact laws that will deliver to our nation and our peoples a future better than yesterday's and brighter than today's. Tinuod nga kausaban, daghang salamat. Mr. Speaker, on behalf, Mr. Majority Leader, at this point, on behalf of the body, I wish to commend the uh, leadership of the House of Representatives 16th Congress for its successful stewardship of this chamber in passing vital legislations aimed at improving the quality of life of every Filipino. For this purpose, I move that we adopt the following resolutions. House Resolution Number 106, 107, and 108. And for this purpose, I request that the Secretary General be directed to read the title, read the title of the aforementioned resolutions. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of the aforementioned resolutions. House Resolution Number 106, Resolution commending the Honorable Speaker Feliciano Belmonte Jr. for his sterling and successful stewardship of the House of Representatives during the 16th Congress. Honorable Rodolfo Parinas. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of uh, House Resolution Number 6. There is a motion to adopt the aforementioned resolution. Is there any objection? 
There being none, the aforementioned resolution is hereby adopted. House Resolution Number 107, Resolution commending the Honorable Neptali M. Gonzalez II, Representative Lone District of Mandaluyong City, for his sterling qualities and his dedicated and exemplary service as Majority Leader during the 11th, 12th, 15th, and 16th Congress. Honorable uh, Rodolfo Siparinas. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of House Resolution Number 107. There is a motion to adopt uh, Resolution Number 107. Is there any objection? There being none, the aforementioned resolution is hereby adopted. House Resolution Number 108. Resolution oh. commending the Honorable Ronaldo B. Zamora for his sterling qualities and his dedicated and exemplary service as Minority Leader of the House of Representatives, Honorable Farinas. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of House Resolution Number 108. There is a motion to adopt House Resolution Number 108. Is there any objection? There being none, the aforementioned resolution is hereby adopted. Mr. Speaker, I move that we now proceed to the oath-taking of the members of the House. All members of the House, please rise. Please raise your right hands and repeat after me. I, please state your name, of having been elected as representative, hereby solemnly swear that I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability the duties of my present position and of all others I may hereafter hold under the Republic of the Philippines, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the laws, legal orders, and decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines. And that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily, without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Congratulations. Mr. Speaker, I move that we now proceed to the election of the Deputy Speakers of the House. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The election of the Deputy Speakers of the House is now in order. Mr. Speaker, I move that we elect Representatives Eric D. Singson, Mercedes K. Alvarez, Fredenil H. Castro, and Raneo E. Abu as Deputy Speakers of the House of Representatives. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The Honorable Eric D. Singson, Honorable Mercedes K. Alvarez, Honorable Fred Neil H. Castro, and Honorable Raneo E. Abu are unanimously elected as dep Deputy Speakers of the House of Representatives. May we request the Honorable Deputy Speaker-elect, Honorable Eric D. Singson, to go up to the rostrum with the members of his family for his oath-taking.
please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I please take your hand. Of, of Ilocusur, second district of Ilocusur, having been elected, having been elected as, as deputy speaker, hereby solemnly swear, hereby solemnly swear that I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability. That I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability. The duties of my present position. The duties of my present position. And of all others I may hereafter hold. And of all others I may hereafter hold. Under the Republic of the Philippines. Under the Republic of the Philippines. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the laws. That obey, I will obey the laws, legal orders, legal orders, and decrees promulgated, and decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines. By the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines. And that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily. And that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily. Without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. May I request the Honorable Deputy Speaker elect Honorable Mercedes K. Alvarez to go up to the restroom with the members of her family for her oath taking. Hmm? Ah, okay. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, please state your name. I, Mercedes Alvarez. Having been elected as... Having been elected as Deputy Speaker. Hereby solemnly swear. Hereby solemnly swear. That I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability. That I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability. The duties of my present position. The duties of my present position. And of all others I may hereafter hold. And of all others I may hereafter hold. Under the Republic of the Philippines. Under the Republic of the Philippines. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the laws. And that I will obey the laws. Legal orders, legal orders, and decrees promulgated, and decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines. By the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines. And that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily. And that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily. Without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Picture. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. May we request the Honorable Deputy Speaker elect Honorable Fred Neil Castro to go up to the restroom with the members of his family for his oath taking. Ah, sige, 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 dito. Castro na na ito. Para. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I. I. Freddy Neil Castro. Of having been elected as. Representative of the second district of Capiz. Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker. And Deputy Speaker. Hereby solemnly swear. Hereby solemnly swear. That I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability that I will well 
and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability the duties of my present position the duties of my present position and of all others I may hereafter hold and of all others I may hereafter hold under the Republic of the Philippines under the Republic of the Philippines that I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines that I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and that I will obey the laws and that I will obey the laws legal orders legal orders and decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines and decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines and that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily and that I impose upon myself this obligation voluntarily without mental reservation or purpose of evasion without mental reservation or purpose of evasion so help me God so help me God congratulations thank you sir congratulations picture picture yes sir picture okay thank you thank you thank you May we request the Honorable Dep Deputy Speaker elect Honorable Raneo Abu to go up to the restroom with the members of his family for his oath taking. <laughs> Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, you state your name. I, Raneo Abu, having been elected as having been elected as second de a deputy speaker. Hereby solemnly swear. Hereby solemnly swear. I that I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability. That I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability. The duties of my present position. The duties of my present position. And of all others I may hereafter hold under the Republic of the Philippines. And of all others I may hereafter hold under the Republic of the Philippines. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the laws. And that I will obey the laws. Legal orders. Legal orders. And decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines and decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines and that I will impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily and that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily without mental reservation or purpose of evasion without mental reservation or purpose of evasion so help me God so help me God congratulations thank you very much for Deputy. congratulations picture picture Thank you, Pa. Thank you, thank you. After his turn, after his turn, after his turn, I'll pass up to my new resolution. This is the next script to you. The Secretary General is directed to the title of the resolution. Mr. Speaker, I now move that we proceed to the election of the Secretary General. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The election of the Secretary General is now in order. Mr. Speaker, I move that we elect Attorney Cesar S. Parea as Secretary General of the House of Representatives. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. Attorney Cesar S. Parea is unanimously elected. Secretary General of the House of Representatives.
May we request Secretary General elect Attorney Cesar Pareja to go up to the restroom with the members of his family for his oath taking. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I please state your name. Cesar Strait Pareja. Having been elected as having been elected as Secretary General. Hereby solemnly swear. Hereby solemnly swear that I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability. That I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability. The duties of my present position. The duties of my present position. And of all others I may hereafter hold. And of all others I may hereafter hold. Under the Republic of the Philippines. Under the Republic of the Philippines. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the laws. And that I will obey the laws. Legal orders, legal orders and decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines. And decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines. And that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily. And that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily. Without mental reservation. Without mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Mr. Speaker, I have the honor to commend the uh, former Secretary General Attorney Marilyn B. Barroa Iap for exemplary leadership of the House Secretariat, being the first woman Secretary General of the House of Representatives. For this purpose, I move that we adopt House Resolution Number 109 and that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the resolution. The Secretary General is directed to read the resolution. House Resolution Lieutenant General Roland M. Ditabali is unanimously elected Sergeant at Arms of the House of Representatives. <laughs> May we request Sergeant at Arms elect retired General Rolando M. in the plenary and in the committees. For this purpose, I move that we adopt House Resolution Number 110 and that the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the resolution. The Secretary General is directed to read the resolution. House Resolution 110, resolution commending General Nicasio J. Raduban, Jr., retired, for his dedicated and exemplary service as Sergeant at Arms of the House of Representatives during the 15th and 16th Congresses. Is there any obje objection? Yes. The Chair hears none. The resolution is adopted. Mr. Speaker, I now move to the District of San Juan, the Honorable Ronaldo B. Zamora. <laughs> 